going on everybody? So I want to do a quick update on the boys, that show, and pretty much their future and what plans came out after San Diego Comic Con over this last weekend. So it looks like when it comes to the boys, even the season four, it looks like they have already passed 55 million views, which is like a 20 to 30 percent. Yeah, it's like a 20 percent increase from the last season. So that's pretty good on them. Obviously, a lot of people are continuing to come through the show and like it and stay and hopefully those numbers just increase when it comes to that final season coming up but speaking of that they did put out like a little bit of a goal list of what is going to be coming out for this show and this series so it looks like yes it is the final season season five coming up and then obviously gen v season two as i've mentioned and there's also one called the boys of mexico which is already in talk but they still haven't created the pilot or anything like that and then also one of the newer ones that was announced at comic con was vault rising which kind of deals with in between like the 1950s and 60s more going to follow like i already forget his name but jensen ackles plays him he came in in season three he's basically like one of the more powerful superheroes out there but was pretty much like even more of a douche at times than most of the other characters that we've been accustomed to and that's why they kind of like put him away for so long in hibernation basically and also like a pretty racist one that survived pretty much throughout all of the racism and did her worst stuff around that time during those times in the 50s and 60s and probably even before that too I think she was like in bed with like a lot of the Nazi stuff too and so I believe that character is going to be coming back to it. It's going to be based around that time, pretty much like the uprising of Vox, the company that pretty much runs the superheroes and all that good stuff. So looking forward to it, see how good it is. And it looks like Disney and ESPN are bringing a documentary about the bubble and that time behind the scenes and all that stuff while it was happening and inside, where it was happening in Disney World 2 where they stayed at some of those hotels, which is pretty crazy. So yeah, we'll finally get a little bit more detail about what ended up happening during that time and how it affected the players too because obviously if you were just stuck with it like the Lakers did you were well off and ended up wanting the one goal and becoming the NBA champion compared to other guys who just didn't want to be there want to be with their family and all that stuff so you can understand why some of them kind of just threw it through the towel in but I guess we'll find out officially what ended up happening around that time with some of the other teams and then I was able to watch that one kind of newer Amazon movie in 2024 called Ricky Stanicki starring Zac Efron and John Cena and Andrew Santino a guy I know from Bad Friends the podcast he does with Bobby Lee it's like one of his bigger movies that he's done so far but was pretty much more interested in it because it's directed by one of the Farley brothers it's kind of been hit and miss especially when they both don't the Fairley brothers don't work together but I know one of them has de- had done pretty well for himself I think he won an Oscar for doing Green Book that movie that came out a few years back with Marshall Ali and Viggo Mortensen but yeah I don't know which one of the brothers ended up directing this one but it was okay it wasn't great I'm probably not gonna watch it anytime soon um it had its some funny moments here and there but mostly just not as funny moments so like i said they need to bring back these two brothers and have them direct together instead of one or the other but it's pretty much this group of three guys who make up a fake named friend some guy they always put the blame on to get out of stuff when they were younger but then also once they got older and in long-term relationships they kind of use him to go off and go on vacation by themselves <laughs> away from their wives and family so it's pretty funny until they basically the lie starts catching up and they have to bring in somebody who is this ricky sinicky character and they find this you know down and out guy and john cena's character to pretty much play him and yeah it pretty much gets pretty or pretty crazy from there i know it's kind of billed as like a raunchy r but it's not really that raunchy at all i think they could have pushed it a little bit further if you want to be considered that but either way I would say maybe give it a shot, but I didn't. I'm not gonna watch it again. So, go with do with that what you will. And yes, I knew I just had to watch this movie on opening day on Thursday when it came out, just because I knew there's gonna be spoilers. And pretty much later on that day and leading into that Friday after 
the movie I'm talking about is obviously Deadpool and Wolverine, but yeah, they pretty much let out a bunch of those like cameos that are going to be in it, and a lot of people have already been posting on X and social media certain things that happen, even screenshots of certain characters and certain things that are happening in the movie. So yeah, it does suck. That's why I was like just so glad I, you know, bit the bullet and ended up going to a pretty early showing, like around three o'clock on. Thursday and got it over with just because yes it was an awesome and fun movie especially for a Marvel movie but I mean I guess you could say it's a little bit of a cash grab bringing in Hugh Jackman as Wolverine again even though he distinctively said he was going to quit after his Logan movie like five or six years ago but if he was going to return this was a pretty good and awesome movie to return because it is pretty much a goodbye to the Fox's version, 20th Century Fox's version of X-Men and, you know, Fantastic Four and all those other things, so they always had, like, a bunch of other stuff they had, but they never really did anything with them for some reason, but all that long history, they even did, like, a nice, like, tribute at the end <clears throat> of the movie to all those movies, which is pretty cool, but either way, yeah, I'm not gonna really say much just because it could get into spoilers and all that stuff and don't know how many people have watched it or even when I'm going to be posting this up, but are the cameos worth it? Yes. Is it kind of like a cash grab by Disney and Marvel to kind of give us all this member berry stuff to, <coughs> excuse me, make us happy and a little bit think of how less bad the MCU is as of right now as a whole? Yes, but still looking forward to seeing what they do in the near future and hopefully they can get back on track because this movie is definitely going to make <clears throat> over a billion dollars, definitely pushing two billion because even over this weekend, I think they were projected a high 100s maybe, but I think over just a weekend, it's going to make like over 200, almost close to 250 million dollars. I could be wrong, but it's definitely going to reach over 200 in my opinion. And to finish this video off for movies and TV shows, I want to end up with some bit of movie news, especially on the Marvel side that happened over the weekend. I believe it was Deadpool and Wolverine that came out over this last weekend and it made some pretty good history. I'm pretty sure it's around 430 something million worldwide, which breaks the record for the biggest R-rated opening of all time and the eighth biggest domestic opening <coughs> of all time as well, which I think was like a little bit over 200 bucks here in the USA, which is pretty crazy. So yeah, congrats to those guys and I'm pretty sure they already made how much it costs to make that and it's just going to continue to make even more money and most likely get over a billion dollars pretty easily so congrats to them and like I said it's a great movie and yeah a bunch of good stuff happening for Marvel because it was Comic Con this last weekend and they announced some stuff for Thunderbolts which is a new movie, a team up movie of a bunch of bad guys together kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy but bad guys that's going to be pretty interesting and then also Fantastic Four, the cast was there really quick, and they're going to start shooting that pretty much this week coming up for the first time, so it was cool to see them all together, and it finally looks like it's happening, so that's at least nice, and it should be out by next year, which is a little bit crazy, because the pretty big special effects heavy movie coming out that quickly, but either way, hoping for the best, and then, yeah, there was some pretty big news that they mic dropped at the end of their showing in Hulk H for Marvel was a bunch of people came out, especially when it comes to two pretty big time directors who helped them out pretty much when it comes to the last couple of Avenger movies and a couple of the better Captain America movies as well as Ed, uh, Joe and Anthony Russo. The Russo brothers came out and it looks like they're going to be filming the next two Avengers movies coming out in 2026. I think it's the first one, and the next one is 2027, or it could be 2025 and then 2026. I don't know. I could be wrong about that, but I know they're coming out within a year of each other, so they're most likely going to film them back to back. But one of the first titles, because it was supposed to be about this uh, villain king that they were building up, but they had to get rid of the actor for his allegations outside of the movies, and they basically scrapped up that whole idea. Now they're going to go with a different bad guy, and his he's basically the main title of that first one called Avengers Doomsday, 
which obviously is alluding to Doctor Doom, who is one of the main villains for the Fantastic Four. But they also had a bunch of people come out dressed in like the garb and mask of Doctor Doom, and then all of a sudden one of them came out from the back, and then he took his mask off and revealed that it was Robert Downey Jr., which is pretty insane, because I didn't think him or most of the people that they killed off in the Marvel Cinematic Universe would come back, but looks like he is going to be playing Doom, but it's also going to be like a Tony Stark variant or version of him, so yeah, people are probably going to get upset at that because it's not probably comic accurate. I think there is a Doom called Infamous Iron Man, so I guess it kind of leads into what that storyline could be from what I heard, but either way, to get someone like Robert Downey Jr. back is probably a big time thing for them, and they definitely thought they needed someone big to be able to bring out this villain, especially for a guy who's pretty much human and he's not like Josh Brolin playing Thanos, which is all CGI and all that stuff. It worked great. He was the best villain so far in the MCU, but I don't know, this has potential to be some pretty crazy stuff, so hoping for the best. And yeah, that was the big time news from this weekend for Marvel and for, you know, nerds everywhere. So yeah, definitely looking forward to those movies coming out in the near future. Thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.